and welcome my friends back to the second episode or the second podcast here on Hot Cuppa TV. Uh, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you tuning in from all around the world, this global planet, this planet Earth, whether you are in lockdown now or whether you have been freed from the restrictions or not. Um, and uh, today we have a very um, really interesting episode. I think you're all going to find it really interesting. We're going to go over uh, one key game and a few other games, but basically one key game uh, in aspect, and that will be Pokemon, guys. We're going to be delving into this. Um, but yes, a little note. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, to you all guys, a massive thank you to each and every one of you supporters of this channel and you viewers, um, everybody on Twitter, everybody on YouTube, and everybody on all uh, of the social media, the planet, and indeed the internet for the warm reception of the first episode. So uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying uh, the fact that there is a podcast. Um, so feel free to leave uh, all of your comments, your questions and any of your thoughts in the comments section uh, of this podcast and I will be getting to them and I will be getting to all of you guys' thoughts as well. So we will be discussing any questions you may have uh, in the in the podcast after. So any, um, it's basically like Q&A in the comments and I will answer your questions. Also, if you have any guest suggestions, you leave them in the comments, guys and we will be bringing on uh, new guests and other YouTubers. We in fact have our very first guest uh, appearing on the next podcast coming up, so episode three. Tune in for that guys and we shall be discussing a particularly um, exciting retro game. So Pokemon, my friends, we have something to discuss, okay? And this is one of my all-time favourite games, my all-time favourite, uh, rooting all the way back from my childhood actually, to my childhood. Um, and that is something that we need to discuss. I have a bone to pick with you. I have a bone, bone to pick with you guys. Um, we have a bone to pick with the whole fo uh, Pokemon franchise in general, okay? There's just so much to it right now. There's so many games um, that have been released ever since the classics. Of course, Pokemon Red on Game Boy, uh, Pokemon Yellow, you know, Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Green, guys. All the way back, uh, I'm talking about when the very first handheld Pokemon games were ever released. There's been tons of handheld versions ever since, going through all the uh, Nintendo uh, handheld consoles and all the way up now to the very first console version of Pokemon. Yes, indeed, it is released for console on the Nintendo Switch. That is, of course, guys, Pokemon Shield and Sword, which was released last year in 2019. So this is what we're going to go over today. We're going to go over very specifically all of the Pokemon generations, um, how they have progressed and what what has changed ever since from my childhood when I loved it all the way until now, um, which has looped back round, guys. And I've been punched into the face and it feels like I've been um, KO'd literally by a Machamp because... Um, uh, you know the amount of Pokemon and new, 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 you know, new generations of Pokemon that have been released over the, lot, the past few years. It's just been mind blowing, guys. And I have to catch up. So we're going to go over it all in this podcast. We're going to discuss the very real possibility of me bringing it to you, delivering it to you guys, like when someone knocks at your guys's door and says, "Hello, I've got an Amazon package." Um, yeah, well, it's a bit like that. You know, except it's not going to be them. It's going to be me, uh, Jordan from Hot Cuppa TV, knocking at your door, offering you guys, you know, a warm takeaway cuppa. And you guys are going to sit, you're going to relax, and you're going to watch me, um, you know, watch me go up against a Mewtwo with my Charizard. So this is the idea, guys. Should we play the games? Are we going to be bringing them to Hot Cuppa TV? Which ones out of all of these, you know, handful of games now that we're losing count, are we going to bring to the channel? Um, so obviously we have a lot of series going so far. Right? And also obviously as well, guys, I want your guys' opinion on this. If there's one game that sticks out to you, you really want me to play next, just say it and leave it in the comment section below. And of course, guys, remember in this podcast, don't forget at the end, if you if you stick around, well, first of all, smash the like rating for me, please. I'd really appreciate it. Um, smash it even harder um, than... Um, even harder than a Squirtle does a, does a shell bash against <laughs> a Bulbasaur. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about, guys. But yeah, <laughs> I think there was a Pokemon news move that I remember, but it was definitely not called shell bash. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but yes, uh, leave your favorite comment. All time Pokemon. Favorite all time uh, in the comments. I think for me, guys, it may have to be. Well, I know my favourite starting Pokemon is, is Charmander, and then uh, because my favourite classic, I think, has to be Charizard. I think my all-time favourite may well be Charizard, but there's so many I just can't pick. I really do love the out of the, out of the legendaries, for example. I love Mewtwo. Uh, I really do love the original three legendary birds, which is Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno, of course. 
I have so many stories and memories about them uh, as well. Um, but yeah, let me know, know your guys' uh, your guys' favorites, um, and I'm going to be delving into a few more of my favorite Pokemon in the future. Indeed, I've just realised something, guys. I want this podcast to be kind of short because I, I want all my podcasts to be around less than 15 minutes. I really hope we achieve that today, but I think it's already been uh maybe close to 10 minutes or so uh or five minutes or so but um anyway guys um yeah so uh what we are going to be be doing is uh, i'm going to be going over here the, the order of the pokemon games um should we be bringing it to the channel now of course i know what you guys are thinking you're thinking jordan you know on hot cup of tv we have here five different goddamn series going you know get control of yourself damn it stop trying to bring more series but that's not the point guys that is not the point the point is is this you know quarantine is as upon us people are going nuts and losing their marbles um and you only live once my friends you know so therefore you must bring uh the fire if you will bring as much series as you can but yeah no of course guys i'm going to be basically balancing it out so i will have the the main series going on my on my channel which i consider to be minecraft okay and jurassic world evolution uh we've got the hightail in the back burner we've got the uh, i don't know whether i can say it yet because it may not be out on the channel yet but we will have another series on the back burner which will be very clear uh probably by the time that you guys listen to this or just after um and then we will and then what else do we have we have obviously the podcast running as well but we have enough room in there guys for me to squeeze in some pre-recorded uh super sped through excuse me uh, let's play as a potential pokemon anyway there's no promises but i'm just saying guys that this is on my mind and i'd like to bring it to you if possible so of course there are now eight generations of Pokemon. If, if any of you guys uh, are a bit behind, if any of you have not been keeping up, uh, we started with obviously the first gen, which is the Kanto region, where Pokemon Red, Blue, uh, and Pokemon Yellow with the special Pikachu edition came out on Game Boy all the way back in 1996. Absolutely crazy and ridiculous. In fact, the Japanese version versions came out then. It was first released in Japan, always being first released in these Asian countries, but... Um, Originally, that is where the original Pokemon uh, anime came from. But then, uh, yeah, we got ours in the in Great Britain, anyway, here in, in 1998. And uh, it was amazing. Uh, I remember I played those games all the way back in the day. Beautiful. I, I actually stayed up. My first Pokemon story, I got uh, the original Game Boy Color. And it was the Pikachu Special Edition Pikachu Game Boy Color. So... Oh man, I was just over the moon. It was me and my best friend. I think we were about seven years old or something like that, and we we um yeah we were having a uh, we were having a classic you know sleepover as you do, munching on crisps and snacks, and waiting. Uh, it was actually my birthday, I think, and waiting for my dad, uh, who had delivered and ordered me a special birthday present, uh, a parcel that was coming through in the post. So now keep in mind these days, guys, um, uh, well, keep in mind, guys, that unlike these days that we are living in here, this 21st century, you know, tech orientated world, you've got Elon Musk shooting uh, rockets up to the sky. We've got drones dropping off packages in, you know, our houses, obviously. Let me know if you guys, the last time you guys put your hands out the window and, um, you know, package dropped into your hands it happens to me every day. Um, especially in you, you guys in America, you have even more advanced technologies, of course, in Britain, in in the UK, we're, we're, we're very old-fashioned, you know, we're still catching up. Um, but I digress, guys. The fact of the matter is technology is very advanced. And uh, back in the day, 14 years ago, I mean, I, actually, I'm, I'm in my mid-20s now, guys. I am 27, right? So this was all the way back when I was seven. So, oh my God. No, I mean, I must be about nine or 10, I, I'd say, right? I was a bit older than seven. But yeah, I was really young. So this is 20 years ago. I, mean, I can't even believe that this was 20 years ago. How old does that make me? That's This is disgraceful, guys. Let's just pretend we, we, we never heard that bit, okay? I would really like to cut that out from the podcast, but... <laughs> you know, I feel extremely young. That's, that's, that's the point, guys. It's about how you feel. <laughs> But anyway, I was waiting with my friend. He was, uh, we were sleeping on the floor uh, in the living room because the door, the door at the time in my mum's old house was, was, was by the, um, was in the living room. So we slept uh, there because the post, the post box, uh, not the post box, the letter box, <coughs> excuse me, guys, was in the, in that room in that, you know, by our front door. So 
we were waiting uh, until uh, the morning for the post to be delivered. And sure enough, at about 7 a.m., we hadn't got s- slept all night. My friend already had a Game Boy, but um, we wanted to connect them up together so that we can battle against each other. He already had Pokemon and a Game Boy, but I never had it. And so it came through the post and the elation in my in my mind. I think I didn't go to school for about a month, guys. Um we sat and we played Pokemon. It came through the thing. I ripped that parcel open and I put in my, uh, my, my, um, he, he sent me, I think, Pokemon Blue or something. And I stuck it into my special edition Pikachu yellow game, Game Boy. And we played, uh, we, we played, uh, Pokemon and we connected our, our Game Boys up and we played it till the cows came home. It was amazing. We, we, we did it till the Slowpokes came home, guys. And it was just, you know, those are the, those are what childhood memories are made of. And then, of course, uh, into the year 2000, around then, Pokemon Gold and Silver um, came out. So obviously, uh, I didn't even get the games until a few years after they came out. And then we had Pokemon Crystal. So, you know, this is all second generation. Then we had the third generation, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Now, guys, the plan is I'm going to play through all of these generations for you guys. I want to play one game from each generation. Um, I'll list them at the end here uh, about what you guys can expect. Now, look. Keep in mind, this is obviously going to take ages. It was going to take a long time for us to be able to get through all the games. But yeah, mark my words, this is uh, one of my passions and one of the games I love from my whole life. It's a bit like Minecraft, you know. I, I have a very select uh, few, um, you know, types of games that I love. And this is this is one of them. And a very, uh, a very select few type of games, a selection of games that I would, would get bored of as well. Um, or oh, sorry that I wouldn't get bored of and Pokemon is, is one of the games but so especially now with all of the new stuff they're introducing this year we have a lot to look forward to so then it goes to Gen 4 Generation 4 we had Pokemon Diamond and Pearl in fact I had to have a uh, chat with my sister uh, about this so Pokemon Diamond and Pearl came out in 2007 guys um, so if there's one thing you remember if there's one, what, if there's one thing I'm proud of uh, this is when you know you've got you can be proud of your sister you know when she has more Pokemon knowledge than you. <laughs> I'm pretty, she pretty much um, helped me out and reminded me about, you know, the order of these generations. Because, guys, um, you know, I was a gamer and I had two younger sisters growing up. So, of course, you know, they were heavily influenced by me and in the fact that I was, I was around games a lot, I think. So what ended up happening is my sister's... Uh, became, uh, especially my sister closest to my age, she became uh, quite a gamer herself, or she was into all of the classics. I even spoke to her, uh, you know, today recently on the phone, and she told me that she's been playing the game now, even to this day, you know, literally with her boyfriend now. It's crazy. So, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, it runs in my family, guys, you know, and um, so then we had Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, in 2007 so that's generation number four so i'd like to yeah i'm just going to go through the timeline here okay um this is to help you guys all catch up if if obviously you've lost track a bit maybe of the pokemon timeline like i have i'm going to assume that especially most of you who are listening to this point you are most likely pokemon fans as well and you know to be to re to be realistic everyone we all know i think most of us do know that like there's not many people who actually aren't Pokemon fans. You either you either didn't you either didn't live through that that era, or if you did live through it, you would have known and you would have definitely been a Pokemon fan, right? Like I don't even know anyone who does. I have never really met anyone who doesn't like Pokemon. <laughs> now that I think about it, um, geez, it's crazy. Except for my my grandmother, she was um <laughs> very annoyed by it when I was younger. But Generation Five Pokemon Black and White uh, coming into the, from the Nintendo DS. For the Nintendo DS in 2011. Now, of course, Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl was on DS. But before that, so that was the first one, which is in 2007. And of course, uh, before that, it was all on the Game Boy Advance. So we can get all of these now on PC. We have Game Boy emulators, Nintendo DS emulators, and we now even have the Nintendo Switch Games Console, which is the newest version of Pokemon has been released Um now we we've, we've got that on on you know available on PC so I'm going to go ahead and nab it and just you know start playing it guys. Uh then we had Pokemon Black and White. So I've played all of the games up to this point. But this is where things started to get a little bit tricky. I never really played Diamond and Pearl properly. I I um I don't know. I, I didn't really uh I don't think I played through that properly. 
Um, I played all the other games literally a hundred times, right? I've, I've completed them all <laughs> back to front. And I still love them. Uh, and then there was Pokemon Black and White. I remember I kind of completed that. But Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, which is in 2012 on the DS, uh, I, again, haven't played these versions. And apparently they are separate parts of the map. So any of you more uh, in-depth or diehard Pokemon fans, if any of you guys know more about this than me, go ahead and leave in the comments your thoughts about it uh, and let me know which games, um, you know, let me know if I'm wrong about any of the information I'm giving in terms of where they fit into the storyline and if I should miss them out or play them or not. Okay, after that... Uh, it's Generation 7, sorry, Generation 6, uh, and that's Pokemon X and Y. 2013, coming out for the Nintendo 3DS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, man, this is uh, one of the generations I am so unfamiliar with. The Pokemon on it, I don't even know their names, you know. But, uh, of course, let's go through some of the Pokemon so far. So, obviously, Generation 1, one and we all know the starter Pokemons for the generations, but... The legendaries for Generation 1, you had the likes of Mewtwo, Mew, Zapdos, Moltres, Articuno, right? And then uh, in the Generation 2, which is Soul, uh, Pokemon Gold and Soul Silver, we had Lugia and Ho-Oh. Uh, and I do believe we had, did we had Celebi, I think? I think Celebi was in the second generation. Or oh, we had a peak of her, but not, not much. Uh, and then we had the legendary, the three legendary dogs, of course. Uh, and then we had uh, Generation 3, Ruby and Sapphire. Um, we had Mantine, which was, I think it's Mantine, right? Uh, which is the, the the legendary water, underwater, deep ocean Pokemon. It was actually found very in the depths of the ocean. Even in the movies, it was signified as that. And the other one, uh, I never really knew much about the other one. I forgot even its name. It's the red Pokemon with the, with the claws. It looks quite uh, big. It's kind of the shape of Charizard, but without a fire and without. it's got the same tail, but it's more robotic and it doesn't have a flame on the end of it. Maybe you guys will know the name of that Pokemon. Um, and then uh, Rayquaza as well, right? That was uh, found in the special edition on um, Pokemon Emerald. Amazing, Rayquaza. The big, you know, uh, dragon-shaped, uh, uh, huge snake-shaped type of Pokemon, um, similar to the shape of Onyx uh, or, you know, a, a large python, something like that. And, uh, yeah, I think it flies. I think that's a dragon type of Pokemon, so amazing. Could be wrong about the type, though. Um, usually, you know, in the past, guys, I knew my Pokemon knowledge, but it's been so many years now since I've familiarized myself with this. Uh, we have Palkia and Dialga in Diamond and Pearl. Uh, now those are the, like the Pokemon go gods, I believe. I think they can, they're like the most power the most powerful Pokemon of all time, uh, literally. Which is um, unless any of the new ones uh, that I don't know about yet. Um, yeah. Then we have because because in theory they're the Pokemon gods, right? All Pokemon came from them. I think that was the story. Um, I really need to go back and watch some of those movies. And guys, I love the Pokemon films. Now they are on. They are making film number twenty-three. Apparently, so that is the the film that they are up to now. They have made twenty-three official Pokemon movies. Let me know your guys' favorite movie, Pokemon movie, in the comments section below. Let me know your favorite Pokemon, your favorite Pokemon movie, and your favorite out of these Pokemon games, or the ones that you remember playing the most. The one that was, you know, your best memory. Then we had the Pokemon Platinum, which is the um, remake. I think that was the remake of Diamond and Pearl. Uh, black and white. The legendaries from black and white were... It was the Unova region and it had 156 new Pokemon in that one. Uh, oh yeah, it was like a dream world. You had a special area accessed by only a Pokemon Global Link. Uh, you could befriend Pokemon with unique abilities that were not normally obtainable in the game. I remember, but yeah, I can't remember the names of those uh, those ones. The Black and White 2, I uh, don't remember anything. I haven't played any of those games, don't know anything about that. X and Y, don't know anything about those Pokemon. Uh, let's see. The Black and White was set in the Unova region, the um, which was Generation 5. The X and, Generation X and Y, uh, sorry, Pokemon X and Y, which was uh, Generation 6, was set in the uh, region known as the Kalos region. And then Pokemon uh, Generation 7, 2016, guys. Uh, again, on the 3DS, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I don't know enough about these, but this is where they started uh, introducing like Mega Evolutions, or maybe they introduced it in the X and Y generation beforehand. 
And uh, Mega Evolutions is something I didn't understand. I really didn't like the idea of spoiling my childhood memories of Pokemon where they only evolve three times. But um, yeah, there's also powerful uh, Z moves apparently in this Pokemon Sun and Moon edition, which I did not know about. They're powerful moves that could be performed once per battle by the Pokemon holding special items. So yeah, this is stuff that we could all potentially explore in a new future series on this channel. Uh, then there was Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So yeah, these are the special or the uh, extra, the additional versions for that region. Um, set in the same Hawaiian inspired Aloha region, which is where Sun and Moon is set, the Aloha region. Uh, of course, the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon provided an alternative storyline and introduced new characters, new Pokemon species and Pokemon's, uh, Pokemon forms as well, which is awesome. So that's the kind of stage we are at. They are, instead of releasing new generations more quickly, they're releasing one generation and then releasing add-ons or extensions to that generation, which I actually prefer, right? Because it, it actually gives them more focus and love uh, on increasing new Pokemon uh, and increasing new explorable areas on the Pokemon games for each region that comes out each year. So that's what they've done with that. Uh, and then, of course, in 2019, last year, we had the Pokemon Revolution. And this is what got me so excited when I started, uh, re you know, looking up some videos online and refreshing my memory, reading about this and reminding myself about, <clears throat> uh, about yeah, you know, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield and what it has to offer. Uh, the fact that this is out on get on games console is mind blowing to me. I've always remembered. Um, yeah, I always remembered. You know, playing them actually on the uh, on the handheld uh, consoles and just thinking, my God, this would be amazing, beautiful. If you could just lay back on the sofa and you know have a controller in your hand and really take control of these Pokemon worlds now, you know? Well, now you can, and uh, it's Pokemon Sword and Shield. So, <clears throat> uh, ironically right now, this is the one time I now don't have a games console. I've literally had games consoles all my life. Always had the latest uh, Playstations and or Xboxes. And yeah, ever since I moved to London in the last year, I haven't, uh, I've had to get rid of uh, my consoles and stuff like that because uh, I, I have mainly only my PC now. But luckily enough, we can now get Pokemon Sword and Shield on the PC. And this year, uh, so I think that came out at the start of 2019. Um, I mean, the name of that, uh, well, obviously it was the eighth generation, the very start of the eighth generation, the start of the console, new console games. It's, it's still made by Game Freak, the very original company, obviously, guys. They've been making all of these official games. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, we're going to jump into the unofficial games in a minute at the end uh, of this podcast just quickly and I'm going to cover those as well. Very important. Uh, and then they did the, obviously all the remakes. Um, but yeah, that brings us to now. In fact, in 2018, I did miss out the fact that they made uh, Pokemon Let's Go on Nintendo Switch. Um, this is something I think my sister doesn't know about, for example, but um, this is uh, the very first official um Nintendo game or a uh, 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 games console Pokemon game that had the you know the uh, the style of the original Pokemon games where you walk around you know capturing wild Pokemon and then you battle the gyms and but it's uh, it wasn't it was it was very lackluster and it wasn't you know very um, thought out in fact it was kind of trying to emulate the mobile games like Pokemon Go uh, and trying to be a bit like that so it was a bit in my opinion I didn't really like it it's, it wasn't like the original games or I didn't when I saw the trailer of that. So uh, now with this Sword and Shield in 2019, um, they now in 2020, this year, I believe in one month, June, uh, but before the end of June, there will be a massive, uh, huge, gigantic expansion pack, guys. Uh, an expansion DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is the eighth gen of Pokemon um, that's going to be released now. It's going to be much more wild area and like literally 200 new Pokemon to explore, as well as I think three to four new legendaries, new legendaries in the generation that already has, you know, some new, some new legendaries in it as well. I don't know the names of any of these Pokemon yet. So I'm looking forward to going through the regions and having a chance to explore it myself when they come out. So I think that might be a good place to start, uh, my friends. Uh, a bit later on this year, in a month or, or two, maybe, you know, in the coming uh, the coming near future, 
we could uh, jump on a brand new Pokemon series with the latest Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, DLC expansion pack. So we'll have the latest and greatest uh, of Pokemon. Very good graphics as well, you know, in comparison to the old games. So some nice visuals to look at. And we can have a little storyline going on here and collect our Pokemon team up and just relive our childhood and nostalgia and all of our memories um, onto this channel. So I think that would be a good place to begin. And then after that, you know, we extract as much juice as we can out of that series. And I can go back and, and you know, start going, covering all of the series from Pokemon Red, Blue, and then bring us back all the way up to Soul, Soul Silver and then, um, uh, uh, Pokemon Emerald and then Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Black and White, uh, X and Y and all of that all the way back to now. Uh, and then next year there will be brand new Pokemon games being released and now because they're getting used to it on Games Console, I think we're going to, the next few, you know, five to ten years, we are in for probably the best Pokemon games we may have ever seen in our life but also they're getting overrun with pokemon there are now currently thousands of pokemon now as far as i know all of these uh, all of the games we've currently discussed are the official games those are the ones i definitely want to play at some point and those are the ones where you cannot capture every pokemon in each game because they simply can't fit them all into the game now there's a list of there's literally hundreds meanwhile while all of these pokemon games have been going on there's been hundreds upon hundreds of uh, unofficial uh, fan made fan uh, fan made games um, that have been created for the emulators and the PC. Um, for example, called Pokemon. Um, I'm going to go over the, like the top two. I think there's tons, but the top two really catch my eye, uh, and I will be wanting to look into these and actually do a let's play for sure on some of these. I already have Pokemon Uranium, and the other one is Pokemon uh, Insurgents. These are the top two rated basically by uh, by most Pokemon fans and most Pokemon people who have played the unofficial games. Let me know if any of you guys, have you played it? Have you guys played uh, Pokemon Uranium and Pokemon Insurgents? I believe inside of these games, they are made the same way that the, you know, uh, official, official games are made. Um, the DS, the, through the DS emulators. However, um, they have tons of new, you know, Pokemon inside that aren't official Pokemon as well. So very interesting, exciting new Pokemon that you can discover as well as all of the classic Pokemon. And for example, I believe it's in Pokemon Insurgents. You can capture like one that you can literally capture more Pokemon than you can in any of the official games. So you have far more Pokemon to choose from in one game. You can capture all eight generations of Pokemon, I believe. Um, or it might not be eight yet. It might be only seven, but soon they're going to be adding the eighth because they update these games as well. So it's absolutely crazy considering the variety that you can go through, the different types of Pokemon you can capture. And I'm so excited to explore the whole Pokemon universe and just relive all of these, you know, my childhood thoughts again. And I think it'll be a really fun series uh, and that you guys might, you guys would really like that, you know, um, and my commentary with that, you know, discussing our favorite Pokemon and things like that. So I think it would be uh, very, very cool. And you guys can help me and choose, you know, which Pokemon we're going to catch. I think that'd be super fun. Let me know your guys' thoughts about that, about the potential series for this channel. Remember, leave your favorite Pokemon, your favorite, uh, what you think would be the your favorite Pokemon game of all time, even the unofficial ones. Let me know if you've played them. And uh, let me know your favorite Pokemon movie as well. Uh, so yeah, anyway, guys, that will be it for the second edition of the Hot Cup of TV podcast. Thank you all so much for all of your support on the first podcast and all of my other series going on here on the channel. Uh, I love you guys and I hope you're all doing well. I hope none of you guys have caught the uh, you know what virus uh, <laughs> that we can't say here on YouTube. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the content here. So we shall speak to you all soon. Uh, in the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in and uh, take care guys.